Vapor barriers are a critical component in any slab on grade assembly or basement slab, but there's a lot of debate with regard to the function of a sub slab vapor barrier and whether holes in the vapor barrier really matter, the location of the vapor barrier, and whether it needs to be airtight. In this video, we're discussing everything you need to know about sub slab vapor barriers and busting a few myths about their function in slab assemblies. Let's get into it. So first off, let's talk about the function of a vapor barrier or a vapor retarder. The goal is to slow down or stop the transmission of water vapor through diffusion, not air leakage, which is a completely different transport mechanism, but via the movement of water vapor molecules from areas of high pressure to lower pressure or high concentrations to lower concentrations. Nature likes equilibrium, and so this is why vapor diffusion acts in this way. Vapor is always in the air, granted at different concentrations depending on the climate, the temperature, and whether there's a nearby moisture source. It acts on the building evenly, it's not concentrated like an air leak. So back to vapor barriers in the context of a slab on grade. We use sheets of polyethylene or plastic for our vapor barrier beneath the slab to prevent moisture from the damp soils from drying through the slab into our homes and buildings since this can raise relative humidity levels and increase the moisture content of the slab itself. This is very important to preventing mold growth, condensation, and warping of our interior finishes. Now this begs the question, do holes really matter in a vapor barrier when it's located sub-slab? Now remember, vapor acts evenly. The effectiveness of a vapor retarder is a function of surface area. If we have a bunch of perforations in our vapor barrier, let's say 5% of the total surface area, that vapor barrier is still 95% effective, and the moisture that does pass through is generally inconsequential. Concrete also happens to be an excellent air barrier, and so we don't get any air transported moisture through the slab unless we have significant structural cracks or penetrations that pass all the way through the slab. So do holes matter in a sub-slab vapor barrier? The answer is no, if it's serving only as a vapor barrier. Polyethylene vapor barriers can also serve as an effective capillary break, a material that can break capillary continuity between two porous absorptive materials like wood and concrete. If you're using a vapor barrier as a capillary break, then the holes matter a lot more since presumably liquid water can make its way through those tiny holes and gaps and migrate inside. This is usually due to poor drainage around the site or a high water table if water is able to actually migrate upwards. But we typically use compacted crushed stone as our primary capillary break below a slab. Now if you're using a vapor barrier to waterproof the underside of the slab, then the holes actually matter. Let's say for some reason you've decided to build a slab in a marshy area, or if you're constructing a basement in a location with a high water table because you want to place your biggest investment at the highest risk possible, then we need to stop thinking of the vapor barrier as just a vapor barrier, but as a monolithic water control layer. This means that we aren't using off-the-shelf polyethylene, but rather a pre-applied waterproofing membrane intended for submerged conditions that can resist enormous amounts of hydrostatic pressure without seam failures. It can serve as a vapor barrier, but its primary function should be a water control layer. What about vapor barriers in sub-slab depressurization systems? Do holes matter? Once again, the answer is no, as the slab serves as the air barrier and will control soil gas migration in combination with a passive or active radon vent to place the space below the slab under negative pressure. We want to make sure that we're sealing all of the joints, seams, and penetrations in the slab, but the vapor barrier itself is not preventing the radon from getting inside. Now, a vapor barrier does provide an additional benefit when it comes to insulating a slab, and that's to uncouple the rigid insulation from the slab during the concrete pour. If the joints of the rigid insulation are left untaped, then pouring the concrete over the rigid insulation can cause the rigid insulation boards to iceberg, in which the concrete mixture gets underneath the insulation, displacing it and causing it to float above the wet concrete, and completely ruining the pour. By locating the vapor barrier above the rigid insulation and below the slab, we can prevent this from occurring. This is also very necessary in cold climates where the ground remains more or less frozen for a good portion of the year, as vapor can migrate downwards. This isn't nearly as common of a problem, but it can still happen. I hope this clarifies the function of vapor barriers in slab on grade assemblies and how to effectively use them. We have to clearly understand the function or multiple functions of the components that we specify in the greater context of the site, the building, and the individual assemblies. A vapor barrier can also serve as an air barrier, a water control layer, or both, or neither. And much of the confusion around these topics stems from poor communication and vocabulary that's incorrectly used interchangeably. If you found this video helpful, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more weekly building science videos and head over to our website at asiri-designs.com where we have over 150 free building science articles that cover a wide range of topics. Links will be in the description below. For now, good luck with your projects. Cheers.